welcome to this edition of Perspectives, a grassroots approach to diversity for issues concerning people of color here in Nassau County. I am A. Douglas Thomas, Program Coordinator for the County Executive's Office of Constituent Affairs. My co-host is Marianella Jordan, Executive Director for Nassau County's Coordinating Agency for Spanish Americans, commonly referred to as CASA. Today, as your host, we will engage the Honorable Legislator from the 1st District, Kavon Abrahams, in a discussion concerning some of the relevant issues in his legislative district and throughout the county as they relate to people of color. Marianella? Welcome. Uh, bienvenidos. And it's my pleasure today to welcome Honorable Legislator Kavon Abrahams, one of the rising stars in Nassau County politics. Um, it is a great pleasure to have you here, Legislator Abrahams. Bienvenido. Um, we'll start out by asking you a little bit about uh, your background politically. Um, our, our viewers really want to know, Legislator Abrahams, before winning your first election um, in the first district, what did you do and where did you work? And if maybe you can tell us a little bit about what led you to Nassau County government and working in the legislature. Okay. Uh, I'll address the first, the last part first. Uh, I lived in Nassau County predominantly all my life. Actually, I was born in Brooklyn, but I pretty much just spent the last 30, 31 years here in Hempstead in Nassau County. Uh, what prompted me to get into politics, really, uh, I wasn't really a, a fan of politics. I actually looked down upon it. When I was in college, I was about 19, 20 years old. Uh, I still thought I could play overseas, play basketball overseas. When I started to realize that didn't work because I had a bum knee, um, pretty much I started to focus a lot of my efforts, but not into politics, but more interestingly into education. And uh, it wasn't until I did an internship, and it must have been the summer of 1995, with Congressman Floyd Flake in his Washington office. And I dreaded it, to be honest. Before, I never knew who he was. I was a Long Island boy. Uh, I had no idea who he was. And um, I dreaded it because I said, all I'm going to do is just answer the phones. I'm just going to open mail. It didn't seem like something that was going to be promising. I went to Washington. It was the most phenomenal experience I ever had. I drafted legislation by the time I was done. I got to talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. He mentored me. I, I was so impressed with Congressman Flake that I joined his church, Allen AME Cathedral, which is based in St. Albans, Jamaica, Queens. Um, I'm still a member to this day. And I truly believe he was the inspiration. He was the person that flipped that light bulb for me in order for me to get involved in politics. I worked with him pretty much up until he retired in office in 1997. I did some private sector work with some financial institutions after that. And then I came back to the county as the budget director in the legislature, did that up until 2002, and here I am today. And I ran for office in 2002. That's really impressive. Um, and oftentimes, uh, I like your story about that, how you thought that maybe you would be a ball player, because a lot of our youth think that that's the only avenue to success. That's really interesting how you took a different path and look at where you are now. Um, a lot of our uh, legislators, you know, are looked at um, in different ways depending on what they do in their district. But do you think that um, Nassau County legislators are public servants? And explain what you think your role as a public servant is. I always hear this quite a bit, this debate in terms of whether I believe uh, politicians or elected officials are public servants. I think first and utmost we're human beings and we need to respond that way. I think sometimes the, the term public servant, even though it's good, and it's somebody who serves the public and serves a large majority, I think that's a very good term, but sometimes it comes with a negative connotation that basically that person is still part of the politician crew. And if you ever hear the county executive explain the word politic, poly one of many, and ticks, which is a, a blood sucking an, uh, mm -hmm. uh, insect, it, it doesn't really have a good sense and good tone in regards to when it gets lumped into those terms. But I always express myself, and I had a community meeting the other night. I always talk about the fact that I'm a human being first. I think like you guys, I, I, I react like you guys. And I think secondly, I think that term comes off a little bit more humane when you're talking to the public. But I think if I had to define myself, obviously I'm, I'm a public servant because I serve the public. I get elected by the public and I'm happy to do that. So and uh, I think from that standpoint, if I had to answer the question more directly, I would say I probably am. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, Again, I'm really thrilled <coughs> with this opportunity because we get a chance to sit down and have an in-depth, candid discussion, discussion with you. Uh, one of the things 
that I'd like for you to expound upon a little bit is what are some of the short-term goals that you have for your LD? Well, I mean, the ultimate goal is always to try to make the quality of life better for all our residents. Um, one of the big things that we realized and I realize is that the property tax burden that exists in Nassau County um, primarily in, in my district has been something that has been burdensome to a lot of our residents and a lot of our uh, community at large. And one of the big things that that's jeopardizing is the quality of life. People cannot afford to enjoy our parks, our beaches, and enjoy all of our leisure activities, our museums, as much as they can because they're too worried about paying their property taxes. And then at the same time, they're working two, maybe three, sometimes even four jobs to try to pay them. And the bottom line is we need to make sure that we stabilize our property taxes. That needs to be our first and our top priority when we're talking about our residents. Obviously, things like health care, education, uh, economic development, beautification of our downtowns are all important things. Those things need to exist in our, not just our, in my Roosevelt area, but my Uindale area, my Hempstead area, my Baldwin area. We started a lot of those things. I was very proud to break ground on a community park uh, earlier this year, which basically beautified a corner of the Uindale area. So we're going to keep moving forward, and we're going to keep doing those types of things because I think they're beneficial to the community. What are you doing in the, in the district for the seniors? Do you have any special programs that you're on top of right now for the elderly in your district? I don't have any specific programs that work just out of LD1. Our office basically is a conduit to the Office of Senior Citizen mm -hmm. Affairs. So from their standpoint, the Senior Citizen Affairs has many programs such as Meals on Wheels and other programs for our seniors and they're all sponsored by, whether they're sponsored by Senior Citizen Affairs, but they're run through Family and Children's Program, they're mm -hmm. run through uh, EAC, uh, which is headed up by Lance Elder. And uh, from that standpoint, uh, they're the programs that, that are sponsored in the community, but I don't do, or I don't have appropriations to right. do senior programs per se. So if a senior needed some um, information regarding programs or whatever else was going on, if they were to contact your office and then in turn, your office would put them in touch with who they needed to be speaking. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, what about youth and um, education, literacy, and voter empowerment? What are you doing about those things in your district? Well, one of the big things that we're seeing with youth, and this is something I've been a strong advocate for since 2002, um, back then there were budget cuts being proposed. I fought those cuts. I was happy to do that. Um, over the last four or five years, we've been able to successfully restore and sometimes put on top of additional money in regards to the youth in our county. Just last year, we were able to allocate 700000 towards youth programs, uh, even though it, I believe it's a drop in the bucket. I truly believe without that money, a lot of agencies will start to fall to the wayside, so that's very important. Voter empowerment is one of the big things that I think is, is actually uh, down in, in my district primarily. Uh, I have about seventy-five to 80,000 uh, residents that live in the district. However, on any given election year, the number could be between ten and 15,000 in terms of a turnout. In gubernatorial and presidential years, that number is significantly higher. So one of the big things we need to try to see is why aren't those people coming out in the e odd years like they're coming out in the even gubernatorial presidential years. One of the big things I think that the reason for that is voter apathy. And the bottom line is people don't really truly believe that their vote means change. And that's one of the big things we need to change as politicians. We need to start showing our faces when it's not election time, showing that we care, showing that we're addressing the concerns, it's good to do all different types of legislation, but if we're not talking about the priorities that I outlined before, then we're not really addressing the community needs, and therefore we're just doing things that we think are positive for our area, not things that are generating results. Right. I just want to add, um, Doug, if I may, that um, Legislator Abrahams is actually really key in providing funding to CASA, to our office, for when you're talking about education, for adult education, because a lot of adults in our community of color really need some support, um, and especially the immigrant community, the immigrant population, whether it's the Haitian community, the Latino community, needs a lot of support in uh, education, in English as a second language, and adult ed for GED. So Legislator Abrahams is key in providing some funding there as well. And I think as far as voter empowerment, um, I'm so glad to hear you say that, because I think our communities um, really could benefit from understanding 
how it is that government affects your life. And by you having a lot of those community meetings is one of the ways that you bring government to the people. And that's a step in the right direction. Um, our next question really has to do with um, how we can provide employment opportunities for our community. And within Nassau County, um, there are a lot of opportunities sometimes for minority students to come in and get experience. Um, how do you think that your role, um, or do you have a role in helping provide um, some sort of path to government for uh, young people of color? I definitely believe we have a role. I think every elected official, um, whether they're at any level of government, has a role in terms of providing employment for our youth. One of the big things that we do, and one of the things that was also um, important to me going back a couple of years, was making sure we had the funding in place for the Office of Human Rights, which operates an internship program for a lot of our youth throughout the county. Uh, the Office of Human Rights also makes sure that, that each young person is placed into a situation, whether it be the District Attorney's Office, Department of Public Works, Office of Consumer Affairs, sometimes in the legislature, each young child is placed into a situation which is going to make their internship experience productive and worthwhile. I think from that standpoint, um, we, they probably take on, I would think, close to 50, maybe 75 students a year every summer to do that. <coughs> Even though I think that's a drop in the bucket, globally, in terms of the county, we need to make sure that we're putting in the right apparatuses in certain parts of the county so that we're strengthening our employment base. Case in point, I would be, right now, a lot of the jobs that are out there are going into a, bi a biotech type of uh, realm. And from that standpoint, we need to start preparing our young people, whether it be in the colleges or universities, to be prepared to take those jobs and be prepared to be successful at those jobs. And the one thing we need to be able to do is train them. And I truly believe working with um, a lot of the private sector, we're going to be able to get more and more of our young people into those types of jobs because that's the, the direction we're going in more than any other direction of retail or service-related or anything along those lines. That's great. Thank you. Good. Um, I, I heard what you said about entry level and uh, entry level uh, positions and and summer youth work and things of that nature but what about what about upper tier manager positions what about VCEs and what about um, other positions within county government that are integral to the administration and how co county government flows do you feel that people of color are adequately represented in those positions also uh, I, I have to give the, the county executive credit. He, he has made it in every single uh, state of the county and every single opportunity that he wants to make um, the county workforce more reflective of um, more reflective of the county's uh, appearance in the county in regards to his residents. That being said, I truly believe that uh, he he's making that mission and going forward with that as a, that as a goal. Uh, obviously, there's there's more work to be done. I mean, there's more positions that. I think African Americans, Hispanics, uh, uh, Asian Americans, uh, Asian Pacific Americans all should fall into and have more of a um, more of a presence in. But the, at the end of the day, I think we're definitely going in the right direction. Um, as I look around and I see the faces of color that exist here in the county, it's definitely more than previous administrations. Mm -hmm. But I think also from the standpoint, we got to be mindful of the fact that. A lot of positions that are currently existing, I a lot of people, you know, I always tell people the, the best place, if you want to make uh, a good living and be able to afford to live in Nassau County, you can't work in government. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the expectations of not just uh, people of color, but all people are mm -hmm. sometimes higher than what it truly is the, the reality. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, I think we could definitely do better and we'll go forward towards doing that. But I'm glad to see that we have a county executive that wants to do better and continue on to go forward. That being said, what are some of the long-term visions for your district? Where do you want to take your vi your district, say, in the next four to five years? Oh, that's short-term, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that um, I've made it a mission to me, and I think it really basically determines my success as a legislator, is, is doing something with the Roosevelt Corridor on Nassau mm -hmm. Road. Um, I think people can't accept the answer that it's always been done this way, or it's always been this way. And, and to be honest, the folks in Roosevelt definitely have a feeling that they 